The woodcutters found a girl in a jungle. What followed next was completely unexpected. But before we start, please take a moment to give this video a like, subscribe to Happy World and hit the bell so you'll never miss these great stories. Forests are one of the mysterious creations of nature. You never know what you'll find there. A bunch of woodcutters were working in the Katrianagat forest of Uttar Pradesh in the northern part of India. The men were busy doing their work when they saw something very strange, an unusual sight. They remained rooted to their spot for a while as they couldn't understand what to do. Little did they know, they were in for a big surprise that was going to change their lives forever. The woodcutters saw a bunch of monkeys cowling. Yeah, you're right, it wasn't strange at all, but what made their eyes bulge was their odd companion. The companion was no monkey or any other animal, and what was it? It was surprising that the monkeys, instead of chasing it away, had included it into their family. The mystery wasn't that the woodcutters found her, the mystery was how she came into that jungle, and when you'll find out, you'll be left gasping for breath. The companion was none other than a girl who must be 10 to 12 years old. Instead of walking, she was crawling just like the monkeys. The woodcutters immediately reported the incident to the authorities. On hearing the unbelievable news, the police rushed to the site only to get more dumbfounded. When they tried to rescue the girl, something unexpected happened. Does the story of this girl not remind you of Mowgli from the Jungle Book? Mowgli's the lead character in the book, written by Rudyard Kipling. He's a feral kid who lives in isolation in a jungle with animals. Coincidentally, Mowgli also belonged to a jungle in India. Mowgli appeared for the first time in a short story authored by Kipling named In the Rock in 1893. He's raised by a pack of wolves. The character soon became a household name and we now have so many movies about him. We all considered it a part of our imagination until the time this Mowgli girl came to the scene who was living with a bunch of monkeys. Her story will amaze you. In order to rescue the girl, police needed to get closer to her, so they tried to approach her but astonishingly got stopped by the monkeys and the girl herself. Not only that, the monkeys screeched at the rescuers to protect the girl from them. They also surrounded the girl so no one could come closer. The monkeys even attacked an officer when the girl screamed at him. It was completely an unexpected situation for the officers, it seemed the girl didn't need to be rescued in the first place. However, after hours of efforts, the police finally managed to take the girl away from the monkeys. They took the girl to their vehicle and sped away, and the monkeys kept chasing them as if the police had taken one of their kids away. A local police officer commented, when they tried to rescue the girl, they were chased away by the monkeys. Though the girl was rescued, a big question was still looming over the head of the officers. How she got into the jungle and where was her family? The answers to all these questions were more shocking than the current situation. The girl was taken to Bahraich District Hospital, where she was given medical aid. It was indeed a difficult task for the doctor to bring the girl to the hospital as she was too frightened to cooperate. The doctors made a very surprising announcement after examining the girl. Mowgli girl was unable to speak and that's why she used to scream at people approaching her. It's difficult to believe that this little girl was living with monkeys, but that's what witnesses said. And apparently she'd adopted many of their traits and that were going to pose big problems to doctors and police officers. If we go by the reports of the Independent, the girl was found naked and very comfortable in the company of monkeys. Surprisingly, the girl, unlike normal human beings, was using both her hands and legs to walk, and instead of uttering words, she screeched at the people to convey her message. Nobody knows how long the girl was residing with the primates, but there was one thing for sure. She'd been living with the monkeys for a very long time. She was extremely frail and had very bad health, so weak she couldn't walk properly. Along with having poor health, she also had a dirty appearance. She was all mired in dirt and was wearing no clothes when found. As mentioned earlier, the girl was having a lot of similarity to monkeys in terms of behavior. She was behaving just the way a monkey does in a scary situation. If not for physical structure, it would have been difficult for anyone to recognize her as a human. Not just the girl couldn't speak, she was also unable to understand language. Lack of proper communication made this case even more complicated. Dr. D.K. Singh, chief medical superintendent of Bahraich District Hospital explained, She behaves like an ape and screams loudly if doctors try to reach out to her, he said. He then added, the way she moved, even her eating habits, was like that of an animal. It was a very complicated case for doctors. Firstly, the girl was not cooperating and secondly, there was no proper way of communicating to establish trust due to lack of a common language and thirdly, she was considering herself a monkey. Expectedly, in order to dodge people, she was crawling around on her elbows and knees. Feeding the child wasn't easy either. Whenever someone would try to feed her, she'd throw the food on the floor and would eat it in the weirdest way. It was clear though from her appearance that she was extremely hungry and weak, and she was still fighting hard with her rescuers. The strangest thing about the girl's eating habit was that she sometimes used to eat from her mouth without using her hands, just like animals. 
DK Singh said, The way she moved, even her eating habits were like that of an animal. The initial two days were difficult and she drank and ate on the floor. Doctors had a hard time treating the girl. They had to start from teaching her basic human etiquettes. So, first they had to make her believe that she was a human, not a primate. The only way to do that was by gaining her confidence. Mind you, she hated human presence around her, let alone interaction. Now, how the doctors were going to tackle this big problem? The unfathomable behavior of the girl was trouble for everyone. Another doctor said that the language barrier had risen as a big hurdle in communicating with the girl. She neither understood what people were saying nor could doctors understand what she meant by her screams. However, the girl continued to make facial expressions and ape-like screeches. Though it was difficult, the doctors managed to examine the child physically and mentally, and it turned out the child was disabled both physically and mentally. She also had low blood pressure, lacked required hemoglobin, and was hot with fever. Not just that, but she also had worms in her stomach. The disclosure of her ailments fans several speculations, and the one that seemed the most possible was equally disheartening. People began to presume that due to her mental and physical disabilities, her family must have abandoned her in the forest, and the fact of her being a girl child would have played a big part in the plan of throwing her in the woods. The district chief forestry officer presumed, I think the family members of this girl had been aware that she's not able to speak and they may have abandoned her near the forest road. Imagine the little girl being all alone in the jungle that had many dangerous animals such as lions, wolves, and many more. Everyone who heard her story had only one question. How did she survive that imperiled forest for so many days and years? Medical aid was a great help for the child. Soon after receiving the help, she started using her pair of legs only to walk and started eating with her hands. Singh said, She's still not able to speak but understands whatever you tell her and even smiles. While there was a group of people who thought she was abandoned by her parents, there was another group who believed that she was residing in the jungle from the day she was born. Isn't it interesting? Regardless of rumors, police began to interview all the missing complaints from the past to identify her. Observing her for a few days, the officers also refuted the claim that the girl was living in the forest since birth. Because she'd been living in the forest for such a long time, it's impossible no CCTV captured her. Another question that comes to mind is that being a child, how she managed to dodge the sight of officers constantly patrolling. Despite constant efforts by police, the unnamed girl couldn't be identified, so the officers named her Essas. Eventually, the police had to resort to the media in order to reach out to her parents. They placed advertisements in newspapers with her picture. Whereas on one hand, the police were exploring all the avenues to identify her, on the other hand, they were also making plans on putting up the girl at the right place till someone came forward to claim her. She was sent to the juveniles. Dr. Duresh Singh Dipola, the founder and president of a special charity hospital where SS was residing, explained, The girl has started showing signs of improvement, but since she doesn't communicate, it's difficult to understand her. The initial two days were difficult and she drank and ate on the floor, but she's improving. Unfortunately, she was not given proper care earlier. Not after many days in April 2017, someone came forward only to stir the pot again. The police officers were calling it a tricky case and didn't have much hope of finding the girl's family. There was another doubt if the girl had been abandoned by the family, then why would they come now to take their girl back? Their doubts all cleared when a couple stepped forward to claim the girl as their child. The family residing in Jaunpur in Uttar Pradesh had lost all hopes, but it was then the couple read the news about the unidentified girl found in the forest of Barash, which is 260 kilometers away from their house. The picture of the girl had a striking resemblance to their missing daughter, and they headed straight towards the place the girl was residing. She's my daughter. She went missing last year and we did everything to find her, said Ramzan. Ramzan and Nazma Shah, the pair claimed the girl to be their lost daughter. They also narrated the incident of how they lost their daughter Elisa. According to them, they were buying medicines in a crowded market when Elisa wandered away from their site. They tried to find her but failed, and after 24 hours of her disappearance, they headed to the Mungra Bajshapur police station to lodge a missing complaint. But unfortunately, instead of receiving assurance from the police, they experienced something really shocking. They'd gone to the police with the hopes, but returned disheartened and disappointed. They alleged the policeman demanded a kickback from them to help them find their daughter. The father of seven children said the officers even demanded money in exchange for help. Naturally, it came as another blow for the poverty-stricken couple who had a daily earning of two pounds a day and was already grappling with the trauma of losing their daughter. By now, they'd realized the law enforcement was not going to help them. Instead of cowing done in front of the situation, they decided to fight back and came up with a perfect idea. Elise's distressed father strained every nerve to get his daughter back. He put up missing posters of her in every nook and cranny of the town. Unfortunately, he couldn't get any help from the posters. The failed attempts to find his daughter had started overpowering him, and his wife and they began to think they'd never be able to get her daughter back. The couple opened up, 
We abandoned all hope. We eventually believed she was dead or picked up by someone or traffickers. We were devastated. My wife didn't eat or sleep for several weeks, but eventually we had to carry on with our lives. Hope is what keeps you alive, and when you're stripped of that, you begin to die internally, and that's what happened to them. Shaw said, The joy of knowing she's alive cannot be expressed in words. I feel so blessed to know we could get her back. Ramzan also asked doctors report about the mental health of SS by saying, She's not mentally stable. Apparently, the parents were more than excited to meet their alleged daughter if it was to see how SS was going to react. Finally, they perhaps had found their lost daughter. Meeting their alleged daughter was a very emotional moment for them. When I saw her, I had tears in my eyes. She kept staring at me. She stared for two hours, he said. But this is how she was. It was a normal reaction for her, Shaw described. Essos got shifted for a special unit for disabled children. The place is more comfortable for her and being sincerely taken care of. A hospital spokesperson said that she didn't respond to seeing him. It was uncanny the girl couldn't recognize her parents or perhaps they weren't her parents at all. The reason was soon going to be unraveled. Readers make note of the fact that the officers were doubtful of Shah's claim. As S. Depola explained, a man named Bular and his wife from Rampur came to SS was their daughter, but when I asked them to tell me something about her or any birthmark, they failed. They claimed that their daughter had a mark on her knee, but ASUS had no mark on her knee. The president went on to say, there's actually a visible birthmark on her neck, but they didn't mention it. As I was able to decide, I sent them to CWC. In any case, we cannot hand over the child unless the CWC decides so. They need to fulfill the procedure there only. Though the pair is very confident about ASUS being their daughter Eliza, they still would have to undergo a DNA test to confirm their claims. Till then, the girl was going to stay in a special home allotted to her. Until then, she will stay with us and will continue to treat her for her condition, said Dr. Depola. Ramzan also revealed, She used to always climb trees and buildings and jump off, but how did she cope in the forest for so long? She shared a lovely bond with her siblings and they want to play with her again. Her mom's eagerly waiting to get her back. If you think that we've reached the end of this case, then let me tell you it's far from it. The case was getting more confusing when the entry of the twist explained soon. Whereas the Shah's claims were yet to be confirmed, another couple came out and claimed the girl was their daughter. The couple from Lakhimpur Kheri district of Uttar Pratesh said the Mowgli girl is their Lakshmi. In order to gain the right on the girl, Makana Devi and her husband Ramadar have submitted an application to the Singahi police station. According to them, their daughter had gone missing on the 25th of November 2012. They also ready to undergo DNA testing. They were very confident about their relationship with the girl, but still, there was one thing that made police doubtful about them. For some unknown reason, the couple hadn't filed any missing complaint about their daughter. When they heard about the Mowgli girl, they rushed to the station officer of Singahi Police Station and requested him to help gain their girl's child custody. But the station officer advised them to contact the Barash police as they hadn't filed any missing complaint about the child. Singh said, We've received an application from Akana Devi and her husband claiming the girl is their daughter. We've advised them to contact Barash police where her case had been registered. Had there been a missing complaint in any police station of Kerry District, we would have been able to tackle the case. It is now under the Barash's police jurisdiction. Though the test is still pending, the Mowgli girl is recuperating rapidly. She's changed a lot. Look how she looks now. Now, Asus has changed a lot. She's no more a screeching girl. She says Donna when she wants food and now when she has to say no. She's not violent anymore, although a bit reserved. Dabla says she has observed these things and is imitating them. This has assured me that she's not mentally challenged, but had just forgotten what it was like to live with humans. It might be coming back to her. According to Isha Srivasava, the caregiver of Asa, she says, She may have missed human touch, so she constantly strokes her arms and legs. She screams to show her disapproval and crawls like a baby when she's tired. She's averse to being touched by strangers. Well, it is to see who the parents of Asos really are. We really hope she gets well soon and lives a normal life, the one that she deserves.